Rules? Advice? Who needs them? Sometimes the best thing you can do is just write. Welcome back, friends. How's the writing going? When it comes to most writing projects, I tend to be pretty methodical. I think and plan and make sure that all of my ideas are in place before I ever start writing. Then, when I do start composing, I have an outline in one window, a document in the other, and everything goes according to plan. This strategy has been so helpful for me, and I've seen it make a positive difference for others too, so I've done a lot to champion this more methodical approach to writing on the show. But the reality is that different things work for different people, and sometimes at different times or for different projects. So while I'm working on an academic paper or a video script, I'll always have an outline at hand. When it comes to creative projects, or when I'm just trying to figure out what I think about something, you won't see an outline or plan anywhere nearby. So today we'll be putting most of that methodical stuff to the side and focusing on the method of free writing, which was popularized, at least in teaching circles, by everyone's favorite Peter Elbow. It involves loosening up and just putting words on the page or on the screen, whatever they may be. I also want to express some gratitude to the folks at Bastion Bolt Action Pens. More on that later, but for now, let's talk about free writing. When I was in grad school, I had a teacher who was a committed proponent of free writing. In fact, he wrote a book about how free writing can be a way to improve your writing style. That's because, as he put it, the first step in writing well is rejecting some of the rules and advice you think you have to follow and just getting down to it. The idea is that you already have your own voice, your own rhythms, your own unique and powerful style, but it's being stifled by the accumulation of rules, restrictions, and self-imposed limitations that are all rooted in a misguided sense of what you should be doing. As a result, you don't write so much like a human and more like an AI chatbot trained on the old handbooks, but, of course, with a fraction of the speed. So in his class, we spent long stretches of time putting everything aside just to do some free writing, a process that he describes like this. Just start writing, not letting your pen leave the page or fingers the keyboard, not stopping to correct for grammar or spelling, not worrying about any of that, whether it's elegant or proper, whether it makes sense. Forget all the rules you half learned in school or that you think you know now. You know what you have to say. Say it. You've got most of it in your head. Let it out. If you get stuck for a minute or draw a blank, don't stop. Repeat the last word until you get back on track. Let it fly. Get it all down as fast and as directly as you can, however rough the language seems at first. And it really is as simple as that. Just write without stopping or editing or questioning or challenging any of the ideas that come out of your head and through your pen. Now is not the time to produce something crafted. Now is just the time to produce whatever it may be that springs forth. In class, that almost always meant writing with a timer ticking away at the front of the room. For 10, 20, or 30 minutes at a time, our pens and pencils would scratch across lined paper while he waited sipping coffee at the front. Occasionally, he'd give us some idea or prompt to get us started, but it always came with the reminder that we were supposed to keep writing until the timer went off, without stopping even, or perhaps especially, if we started to deviate from that original prompt. Since then, I've kept the free writing habit alive in various different ways. Lately, though, I've been using it as a way to start the day. I don't write for a set period of time, but for a set number of pages, two to be exact. And as always, I write without stopping, writing about whatever comes to mind. Sometimes it's creative ideas, other times it works more like planning for the day or for the week, and sometimes I spend a good chunk of time complaining about having to teach an 8.30 class. But I'll tell you this, it's been one of the more pleasant habits that I've worked to incorporate into my day-to-day. -day. There's just something nice about sitting in the quiet and dark of the morning with an open notebook, looping and whirling my way through every letter of each word that comes to mind as I write. And it really is as simple as that. Grab a sheet of paper or a blank document and write until the timer runs out or the pages are full. And you can do a lot or a little, it doesn't matter, so long as you don't stop to edit, critique, revise, or question. Even if you're writing the same word over and over, keep going. The objective here is just to write and to write freely. So free writing is a pleasant activity, but what makes it a useful one? 
Well, for a start, it's a good way to start building a writing habit. My former teacher, Chris Anderson, explains it in terms of a runner who runs every day. It's a way of getting into the groove and building up your skills a little at a time. With free writing, it doesn't matter what you write, just that you write. And with time, you'll find yourself in the midst of a regular writing habit. And that's not something that can happen if you just sit around waiting for inspiration to strike. So start writing and keep writing, even if it's just 15 minutes of nonsense. At least then, you can honestly say that you're a writer rather than a waiter. But it's not just that. One of the key benefits is that it can help you find your own voice because it removes all of the stifling filters. As Anderson puts it, most beginning and inexperienced writers over-translate their own original language into some other language they think is more acceptable or formal or proper, and in the process lose the force of their own voice. It's as if they have good, clean words inside them, or the potential for good, clean words, but then they panic, and instead of saying what they think, start trying to fancy it up. I've mentioned before how I'll often have student writers drop by my office feeling unsure of how to proceed with a paper. Usually, the fix is as simple as asking them to tell me what they mean to say, and then they tell me what they mean to say in really clear and straightforward terms. And my response then is that whatever they just said is what needs to go in the paper. At that point, it's common for them to ask if it really is that simple. Shouldn't writing be more difficult or complicated or official in some way? And of course, the answer is no. Writing is all about saying what you have to say in a meaningful way. But writers get so distracted and anxious trying to sound like somebody smart or impressive that they end up losing control of their writing and failing to say what they meant to in the first place. For example, and this is kind of a silly one, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the word plethora show up in people's first papers of the semester. It's a word that people hardly use in everyday conversation, but it shows up all the time in the first paper of a class. It's like the $100 word that everybody knows and that they all try to use at their first chance to impress the teacher. The problem, though, is that because it's such an unnatural word, it ends up coming off as pretty disingenuous. Plethora is a symptom of what happens when writers try to sound fancy instead of like themselves. And yes, I'm sure you've had a teacher at some point ban the phrase a lot, and so you've had to use the word plethora instead. But the reality is that a lot is a common part of everyday conversation, and plethora only really shows up when you're trying to impress someone. And if you're trying to impress someone, chances are you're not being very true to your own voice. So free writing is about setting aside all of the pressures and rules that you've heard before, like that you should never say a lot, and instead just letting your ideas flow out naturally and freely in whatever words come to mind. And I've seen the good results of this process firsthand. Especially in creative writing classes, I'll get pre-planned and carefully thought out pieces that end up actually being pretty dull and uninspired. They're all things I've read before written in styrofoam prose. But then those same student writers spend 20 minutes free writing, and they turn around with clever ideas, inventive turns of phrase, and genuine insights. There's something that happens when writers set aside the idea of what they think they're supposed to be doing, and it makes their writing so much better, so much more human. Of course, when you're free writing, there tends to be a lot of garbage that comes out too. The ceiling on free writing can be especially high, but the floor also goes pretty low. But this is actually a third benefit of free writing. It can give you a new mindset and a new approach for working through the process of a difficult project. If you go in with a methodical plan, you go in with the assumption that you have all the ideas figured out and you just need to write the paper. It's maybe a little bit like constructing a building. You have the blueprint and all you need to do is hammer nails in the right place. For some projects, that's a really effective way to go. For others, though, the pressure to assemble a plan can be stifling. You don't actually know what you want to say, much less how all the pieces fit together. So what do you do from there? Well, for those kinds of projects, the plan and build approach just might not work. And for me, that's true when it comes to creative projects. I don't even attempt an outline. Instead, I start with free writing. In those cases, I imagine myself maybe something more like a sculptor who's working with a big blob of clay and removing the things that don't belong. In free writing, I'm creating that glob of clay, and then the process is one of gradually refining and removing the things that don't belong, leaving behind only what I really meant to say. 
In my teacher's words, free writing makes a mess, but in that mess is the material you need to make a good paper or memo or report. You need the mess to get the usable material. So free writing means that you'll end up writing a good deal more than you'll actually end up using. But that also means that your process is the easier one of removing what you no longer need, rather than sitting at a blank document and wondering what you're supposed to say next. When planning fails or feels unreasonable, free writing sets you up with a different approach to get your ideas out and then cut away what doesn't belong. That's a process that can sometimes be more accessible and produce less pressure than the more traditional or methodical method of outlining or planning. Before we say more about what comes after free writing, I can see that glimmer in your eye. You're thinking that free writing is something that you'd like to try out. And of course, you're right. But some of you might also be thinking that you'd like a nifty new pen so you can start out in style. And if that describes you, well, boy, have we got some news for you. Oh, hello, my name's Andrew, but you might know me better in my role as Andrew on the almost hit show, Writing with Andrew. And I'm here today to tell you about a special offer from Bastion Bolt Action Pens. A little while ago, they sent me one of their signature writing implements, a bolt action classic machined from stainless steel. And I've spent the last few weeks incorporating it into my regular writing routines, including daily free writing. After all this, I'm happy to share that it's been a pleasure to use. Obviously, the bolt action mechanism is a unique feature of the pen, and it's honestly a lot of fun to play with. It kept me happily engaged while sitting through my department meeting last month. But of course, the most important thing for a pen to do is write, and I'm happy to say that it delivered above my expectations on that front as well. This pen is hefty, and it did take me a minute to adjust to writing with something made of steel instead of plastic, but the weight is nice, and the pen glides smoothly and freely along the paper. It really is a tactile pleasure to write with this pen, which is a worthwhile thing. My secret favorite part, though, is the way that it looks like a single piece of metal, even though the tip unscrews so you can replace the ink. The fact that the seam is so nearly seamless seems to say a lot about the care that goes into the production of these pens. It's a little thing, but it's a significant one in my eyes. But wait, while they did send me a pen, I also went behind their backs and picked up a second one so I could really tell you what they're all about. Because I'm a living caricature of myself, I mostly write with fountain pens. So I wanted to try out Bastion's take on the fountain pen, this time in titanium. And I've been just as pleased with this one. The titanium's not as heavy, which I think I may prefer, but it still feels robust. I was happy that it came with a twisty piston converter rather than an ink cartridge, and of course, the screw-on cap comes with the same nearly seamless seam that makes me so happy. I will say that at first, the nib didn't have great ink flow, but after a little aggressive writing, which is to say writing with a lot of pressure, it opened up and now it writes just how I'd expect. I've been alternating between it and the ballpoint in my daily writing, and I think I like the fountain pen better, but it is a close call. I do miss the bolt action mechanism, and the actual writing experience with the ballpoint has corrected my mistaken belief that ballpoint pens are always inferior. Either way, they've been a joy to write with, and I'm sure I'll continue writing with them for a long time to come. Now, if you're interested in elevating your writing experience too, head over to Bastion Bolt Action Pens and use the code WWA20 at checkout for 20% off your purchase. Plus, if you use the link in the description, a portion of each purchase will go back to the channel. So a big thanks to them for supporting what we're doing here, and of course, a great big thanks to you as well. Whether or not you decide now is the time to upgrade your writing life with a Bolt Action Pen, I'm just glad that you're here. Showing up counts for a lot. Of course, if it is time for an upgrade, I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I have. And now, back to the show. After you've done your free writing, you'll have a big mass of pages that are full of things that are both excellent and worthless. Which takes us to the next stage, which is revision, where you figure out what needs to stay and what needs to go. And I think that may be one more benefit of free writing. For a lot of writers, making necessary cuts can be unusually difficult. When you spend hours sweating over every sentence, it can be a challenge to part with any one of them, even when you know in your heart of hearts that you should. But when you're doing free writing, you know that words come cheaply and that most of what's on the page is rubbish anyway. So when it comes to cutting out the fluff and just keeping the good stuff, free writing can take a lot of the anguish out of the process. Besides, if it really comes down to it and you need more, you can always set another timer for 20 minutes and crank out some more words. 
In my own poetry writing process, I often begin with free writing. Once that's over, I confront a first draft that is kind of a shapeless mass of words, images, and ideas. What I really want to say is in there somewhere, but it's also cluttered with a lot of other things. So I start looking for lines I don't need or for ideas that I could express in fewer words. I keep a lookout for the most striking images and language and cut out those things that are more abstract or overly explainy. As I do, the poem starts to take shape, sometimes falling into regular rhythms and forms. During one particularly intense period of revising a lot of my own poems, I realized that I generally ended up with final drafts that were about half as long as the first drafts. And that's not to say that you need to cut 50% of what you write every time, but it's just to show that free writing will give you more than you actually need. And that's a good thing, because it's often much easier to cut what doesn't need to stay than to figure out what's missing and try to create it on demand. So you might go through your free writing and then underline or highlight the most interesting words or phrases. Or you might do what my teacher did and wheel a big garbage can into the classroom one day and tell us to promptly throw away half of what we'd done as soon as we'd finished. Now, under normal circumstances, that might seem like a pretty severe task, but with free writing, words come cheap, so parting with them isn't all that difficult. The basic idea, though, is this. Great writing is the product of great revision, not great drafting. So by free writing, you give yourself a relatively quick and painless way to produce copious amounts of material to revise. If you just sit around and think about what you could be writing, you probably won't get very far. But if you crank out a lot of stuff all at once by free writing, you'll give yourself plenty of material to work with. With free writing, you get yourself into the groove of writing and you set yourself up for more productive revision. Really, it trains you to see writing as easy and revision as painless. And it can be a lot more productive than sitting and stewing over every individual word in an effort to write something perfect on the first try. So my friends, if you're feeling restricted in your writing, either by rules, expectations, or a shortage of ideas, free writing may just be your ticket to a more sustainable writing habit and a more productive approach to writing overall. When you set everything else aside and just write, whether by hand as I often do or on a screen, you put yourself in a position to generate new ideas, make new connections, discover new insights, and even enjoy the pleasure of putting pen to paper in a moment of meditative quiet. Plus, if nothing else, it's a good way to make sure that you're showing up to write as often as you want to. So the best thing for me to do at this point is to get out of your way and let you give it a try. Thanks for joining me today, and especially for sticking around to the end. It's always a joy to spend this time with you. Again, if you're interested, check out the range of Bastion pens at the link in the description, and don't forget code WWA20 for 20% off your order. With that, I'll leave you with some final free writing wisdom from my mentor teacher, and I'll see you again in the next one. Some people believe that writing well depends on secret, complicated codes only insiders know. I don't believe that. Writing is hard work, very hard work. There's no simple formula to make it easy and fail-safe every time, but it's also not some arcane mystery for the very educated or the very talented. You can write well too, right now, building on what you already know. In fact, I think the first step in writing well is rejecting some of the rules and advice you think you have to follow and just getting down to it. The subtleties can come later. Once you've said what you have to say, and even then, you don't have to twist and bend your own inner rhythms too much. The key is to believe in those rhythms. Capture them.